So in order to be able to carry out a very good study and write a research paper for a high impact journal or write a really good thesis, what you will need is solid justification for your study and you will need to find what is called a research gap. But one of the most common questions and doubts that people have is how do I find a research gap and what even a research gap is? That's why in this video I'm going to show you first of all exactly what a research gap is and then I'm show, going to show you exactly how to find it quickly so that you can get started doing your research. So let's dive right in. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkovek and I run Academic English Now, where I help early career researchers write more research papers for high impact journals. And in this video, I'm going to focus on really the fundamental aspect of doing research, which is being able to find research gaps that give you justification for your study. So first of all, before I explain how to actually find um, the research gap, let's talk about what a research gap is first of all and there are really three main types of a research gap the first type of a research gap is a lack of studies or insufficient studies and in in this type of research gap there are also several subtypes that you could identify because for example there can be insufficient studies in a particular geographical area so for example a lot of studies have been conducted in the us but very few in brazil right? There can be insufficient studies on a particular uh, material or group of people. In other words, researchers have studied um, children extensively. However, they have not studied adolescents when it comes to this particular topic, right? And of course, there can be um, insufficient studies in terms of a particular methodology. So maybe a lot of studies have been quantitative in nature and very few have been qualitative. Right? So the first type of a research gap is insufficient um, studies on a particular um, topic, geographical area, and so on. Now, the second type of a research gap is also um, some sort of controversy or lack of um, knowledge on a particular topic. So what happens is that maybe researchers have studied one particular area extensively however the the you know the results are kind of mixed you know some studies say that something you know a particular intervention works really well other studies you know show no significant effects and as a result we kind of still don't know what's going on right and maybe there is a debate or a controversy among researchers so that would be another research gap or a justification for your study and then the third one is limitations of previous research. So basically these are problems with previous studies. For example, maybe a lot of previous studies have used a very small sample size. As a, as a result, it is very difficult or impossible to generalize their findings to, to, to a wider population, right? Um, so that would be, you know, a problem or a limitation with previous studies and that gives you another justification. If you want a more in-depth look at what exactly a research gap is, I've got another video where I explain in much more detail those different types of research gaps and give you clear examples from um, the literature as well. Um, so you can check that video out. But in this video, I wanna focus now on how to actually find this research gap. Because there's one thing, you know, understanding what a research gap is on a theoretical level, but how do you actually go about finding it? And the short answer, of course, is you've got to read. You've got to read the literature. And that's probably what you know your supervisor has told you. Well, go and read and you will find it. Well, but it's been three months and I haven't found one. Well, it means you haven't read enough. Go and continue reading. You know, it's this kind of um, generic advice that doesn't really lead you anywhere. What you need is, is a more kind of systematic approach to finding. Um, the research gaps. So one of the key ways of, of doing this is to first of all look at the introductions of research papers. Why do you want to look at the introduction? Well, because in the introduction previous researchers will identify a research gap that they are going to address. And it is likely that if you're looking at very recent papers, for example published you know, this year or last year, 
um, you know, that paper probably to an extent addressed that research gap, but there is a chance that you could further, you know, kind of zoom in on that research gap or use part of it in your own study, right? So the first tip to, um, to find a research gap is to look at introductions and when you're reading paper, focus on what research gap um, the researcher identifies in the introduction. So that's number one. Number two, you want to look at the discussion or conclusion part of, um, of a research paper. And what you want to do is look for the limitations that the researchers express, the limitations of their research. And it's very easy to find, you know, if you're reading papers um, electronically, just type in limitation um, into the um, PDF reader, and then you will find that part of the text where um, the writers talk about the limitations of the study. And typically, you know, all research papers will have limitations explicitly express that, right? It's, it's almost 100% in the conclusion or discussion, right? So you can use that for your own research, you know, because, you know, the researcher already did the criticizing themselves. You don't have to go and read the study in a lot of depth and try to think yourself what the limitations actually are. The researchers have told you that. So write them down and see if you can use those limitations in order to justify your own study. So that's number two. Number three, also continue reading the conclusion um, or the discussion section of the research paper and look for suggestions for future research. It's again, very easy to find them because typically there are phrases like, it is therefore suggested that, or we suggest that, or something like this, right? And what the researchers do here is they give you great ideas for future research. They've identified the limitations and based on those limitations, now they're telling you what you should do in your study. And if you're looking at very recent papers and if you've watched my other video about how to read um, very quickly and how to do the literature review and the link is somewhere here, you know that I recommend looking at, you know, the, the latest sort of five years maybe. Um, of research papers, at least initially, um, what you will find is that, you know, some of these suggestions for future research obviously haven't been put into practice yet because it's too early. If something, you know, was suggested just this year or last year that other researchers should do, you know, not many people will have had the time to actually do this. So this is your chance to go in, take that suggestion for future research and put it in into your study as a justification and, and do a study on that. Right. Um, so that's that's the third element that you you want to you want to do when finding the research gap. Now, the fourth thing that is perhaps slightly more difficult than what I've what I've described thus far is to try and see patterns in the literature. And in order to be able to do that, of course, you need to read a lot, but that's not enough. You, you need a system as well for keeping track of you know, of the literature and what you're reading. So, you know, I use a simple um, word sheet um, like this one, um, just a table in Word, you know, where I write down obviously the title, the authors, um, but then I write down the main aim of the paper. Um, I write down the, um, the methodology of that paper. So kind of, you know, the sample, um, quantitative or qualitative, how the study was conducted, just in bullet points. And then um, I'll write down the main result as well. And I'll write down the limitation um, of that paper and any notes that I that I want to write about. And if you've if you've been doing that for for long enough, right, you will start seeing patterns. In other words, you know when you look at the aims of the previous research in your field, you'll start seeing that maybe everybody is focusing on a very similar thing, and very few people are doing anything else, right? Um, to give you an example, in my own field, there, there was a time where kind of everybody just followed the crowd and, you know, there was a fame, one famous piece of research and then everybody started doing the same thing. In other words, everybody was kind of, you know, asking students whether they prefer to have English classes with native or non-native speakers. And there were like hundreds of papers on just that one thing. And it's, you, you're going to start seeing those patterns if you write down, for example, the aims of those papers and you'll start seeing that, hold on a second, everybody is, seems to be doing this, but nobody is looking at something else, right? And the same goes for methodology. So if you write down, you know, the, the type of study or the sample that is studied, you will start seeing patterns as well, that everybody seems to be doing this thing, but hold on, but we, we also have this other thing that we need to study, right? 
So that's the fourth thing. And if you have such a system, you'll start seeing patterns. And from these patterns, you can extract the problem or the research gap, what hasn't been studied yet, which gives you the justification for your study. So in this video, I told you um, what the research gap is exactly and how to find it. So if you're interested in, you know, in being able to write more research papers for high impact journals regularly, then definitely book a free strategy session um, with me. It's a one to one um, session where we're going to, first of all, identify your problems and then pinpoint your exact goals and outline a personalized strategy that help you to achieve your goals. And then if it sounds like it's a good fit for us, we can talk a little bit further about how exactly we could work together and how I could help you. And the link to that free strategy session is somewhere in the description of this video.